Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fashionpreneur Diaries and I'm back with another random entry but super excited to talk about 18 resources and lessons I found while owning a fashion brand for 18 years. So this is an entry that is truly dear to me and it's one that I knew would come to pass many years ago but year 18 really snuck up on me. So for those that may not know, I have been a full-time entrepreneur in my career as a fashion designer and fashion business coach for seven years now. I celebrated seven years of entrepreneurship this past April 2023 and I was so overjoyed but God really gave me double for my trouble this year because I didn't even realize until about two weeks ago that I am also celebrating 18 years of irregular exposure. Yes, my fashion brand, my label was birthed 18 years ago. Can't believe that. But this brand was truly birthed in my mom's basement in the NAACP Youth Entrepreneurship Summer Camp Program, in my locker. Like it has been birthed and just like, grown to where it is today and it's 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 beautiful to see and I'm really grateful and I had to sit with myself on that and as I started to tell some friends and family like dang this brand 18 years old they were just blown away and I'm like this is a huge accomplishment I need to sit in this for a second um and I need to celebrate this so our birthday is coming up October 27th irregular exposure will be 18 years old my fashion brand has grown so much and I don't try to negate my adolescent years as an entrepreneur because I was a fully operating entrepreneur at 14 years old. Like, y'all, my business was a tax paying business in Baltimore, Maryland at 14 and 15 years old. I had my LLC, EIN, tax ID, okay? We've been operating. I had my business bank accounts at Bank of America. <laughs> like, I was not playing. And I was selling hoodies and jackets out of my locker making custom wedding gowns for women double my age. Like, what's crazy to me is I was looking at a photo of me at New York Fashion Week showcasing my brand, and it was in 2013. And I was wearing this outfit I designed that was my first ready-to-wear design. When I started this brand, I was doing custom designs. So people would bring me pictures of, like, celebrities wearing their, like, dream looks, and I would just reproduce those. So I wasn't really designing what I wanted to all the time. And eventually in 2013, I want to say like 2011, I announced like I'm going to do ready to wear design. And in 2013, I made my first collection. So during that two year period between 2011 and 2013, I didn't design pretty much anything. I had lost my dad to a heart attack unexpectedly in 2011. And I was uninspired. I had gotten really comfortable at my nine to five. I was working in property management. I was like, you know what? Maybe this is what I should be doing. Like, I didn't sew anything. And I remember a friend came to me and was like, you need to get back in your bag. You need to get back in your sewing. You need to get back into your craft. You need to get back into your gift. Like, come on now. Like, what you doing? And I took that advice. And I eventually went to the fabric store, got some fabrics, and started designing some stuff. And in 2013, I developed my first ready-to-wear collection. And it, honestly, when I look at that photo, it was this red top and these red pants. When I tell y'all I would still wear that fit today, it's so fire. And I was like, dang, I'm so proud of myself for building something that's timeless, um, at least to me. And I love my brand. I love this business that I've developed. And I can't wait to take it as far as I possibly can, package this thing up and sell it. <laughs> so I, I'm really proud of what's been built. So today I just want to really give you guys 18 resources, real websites, connections, lessons I've learned, just things that I've learned. Um, now y'all know my podcast, I usually give so much inspiration and insight and we're going to do a little bit of that here and there too, but I really want to make this entry for those emerging and aspiring fashion business owners, or if you are an entrepreneur in a different field, I just want to give y'all some real resources that I've attained over these past 18 years, real websites, real funding opportunities, like some real things that's going to help y'all. All right. 
So let's get into it. We're going to go down the list. I want y'all to know that I didn't put these in any certain order based off of value. I just put these resources and lessons down literally as they came to me and as God spoke to me on it. So I'm excited to get into it. So let's get into number one. Baby, first thing I have here is a lesson, not a resource, but a lesson. So lesson number one, friends and family aren't my customers. I have kind of came out of retirement a little bit within the Fashionpreneur Academy. And I've been mentoring a few people privately. Um, and there's one person in particular that I had spoken to earlier this week. And they had said to me, you know, sales have been really tight. I've been really upset because my family hasn't been supporting. And I was like, well, tell me more about that. Like share what that looks like. Cause I want to understand and this person was like, you know, my fam family hasn't bought anything from me. They haven't bought any outfits. Um, and she was like, you know, but they do definitely hear me out. They listen to me. They've sewn into me financially, but they don't really support me the way I need support. And I was like, you can't decide how people should support you. You can't put your expectations on people. My... I have so many family members that would have no business wearing a regular exposure. I have so many friends that their style is completely different. They wear more subtle pieces. They don't need these androgynous fleece over the top corseted pieces. It's not their style, right? So I had to explain that to that person. I said, one thing you got to learn is you can't take this thing personal. This business is its own entity. It is its own being. It should be standing on its own. It's not you. Your family supports you, right? You're building something that is not you. This is something that hopefully will be, will be built up and sold one day. We got to stop getting so attached to our businesses. And I know I call a regular exposure, my baby, my baby's turning 18. But baby, if somebody wants to come buy this thing for a good nine figures, you know, don't blow my mind, God, do a billy. You know, if you want to come by, I mean, I sell it to you. You know what I'm saying? So don't get so attached to these things and take it personal. So I had to learn family and friends aren't my customers, but that's okay. I want my family to be my family. One thing I learned over these 18 years, y'all, I've had so many pop-up shops, so many grand openings, so many launches, and my family has come and supported. They will buy something. But I told them, stop buying stuff y'all know y'all not going to wear. Stop. I don't need y'all to support me in that way. I love when my mom is just my mom. It, it fills my cup. Think about how much goes into being a multi-million dollar business owner and entrepreneur. My brand has made multiples of millions of dollars, right? Do you know how much goes into that? Do you know how much it means to me? I live in LA. You know how much it means to me to go back home to Baltimore and go back home to Philly and see my mom and see my family and just get to chill, play cards, play some Uno, tear somebody up with a wild card and a draw four. That That is all I need you to be. I don't need you to consult with me on my business. I don't need you to do anything but be my family. So I know that sometimes we want our friends and family to do a little more, but take pride in that because when you look up and it's year 10, year 15, year 18, you're going to want your family just to be your family. I was watching this clip on social media the other day. And it was Mike Todd, the pastor, um, amazing pastor. And he was in an interview and he had said, you know, I had to tell my church congregation very early on, my wife is not going to be your traditional first lady. She not about to be running no conferences. She not about to be having first lady events. She not about to be doing all this. I need her to be my wife and so into me to make sure I can do my job. And I was like, people don't understand that. Like, it's the same with family. So don't put so many expectations on your family and friends. Don't take it personal when you're building something. I know it's dear to your heart, but it's not for them to purchase all the time. So that's great if you have a product that your family and friends can support because they are your target customers, but it's very rare that that happens. So don't take it personal, baby. All right. So let's get into number two. Number two is a resource, a resource that I actually found within 18 years of developing this fashion brand. And I want to be clear, y'all, the resources I'm giving y'all are current. I'm not giving y'all resources from 18 years ago when I was 14 that probably don't even exist anymore. So I'm giving y'all stuff y'all can utilize right now, no matter where you are in your process. If you already have launched your business, if you're about to launch, if you have a full 
fully operating business and you just need some systems and resources, this is going to help you. So number two is Clavio. Clavio is a system that many of you know if you have done anything within the Fashionpreneur Academy. So Clavio is an amazing email and SMS blast platform where we can pretty much send our emails and SMS to our customers. So there's so many different levels to marketing. Y'all know there's levels to this, right? So you got your top of funnel marketing, your middle of funnel, and your bottom of funnel. Top of funnel is that broad spectrum. That's where customers don't really, they haven't become customers yet. I'll say prospects have not purchased yet. They don't even know usually what your brand is. They might see it on an ad. They might see it at an event. They might see it on social media, on the explore page. So they click on it. They're like, mm, this is cute. Like this outfit. Mm, this product looks like something I'll be interested in. And they might click and visit your website. When they visit your website, hopefully if you have your website set up properly, if you're a fashionpreneur, then you already know you should have a hot free offer. That is that pop-up that usually comes up when you visit platforms and it's like subscribe for 15% off, subscribe for this free ebook. That freebie is a format in order to get data from your potential customers, right? So let's say that I come to your website and it's saying subscribe now to get 10% off the first time you shop. Okay, cool. I give my name, my email, my phone number. Now that information is retrieved. And in exchange for that, I get that incentive that your brand offers or your business offers. Within that data, that data is placed on Clavio. Now that I have that data, I can email you, I can text you. And even if you know about Clavio, I just want to make sure that you guys are using it to its fullest potential. There are so many benefits to the segmentation. We segment based off where you are in our funnel. So top of funnel, we got an email and SMS segment. Middle of funnel, we got a different segment. Middle of funnel is once we have your data, we want to make sure you come back and purchase. So we might offer a 10% off discount code, 24 hour flash sale code. Um, so we want to get you back. Bottom of funnel is the purchase level. We love a bottom of funnel, funnel girly. That's the girl that's paying with the coin, right? So bottom of funnel is where we obviously get the purchase, but we want to make sure they come back and they're happy with their purchase. That's where our automation starts asking questions about reviews, shipping times, uh, questions about where you wore the outfit and asking you to come back and shop again eventually. So make sure you're using your segments to its fullest potential, but Clavio is an amazing resource. Number three is another resource, Dialpad. So Dialpad is a resource I discovered a couple years ago. I love Dialpad. It is our system that we use for our um, customer support phone and customer support text message. So Clavio, we use that for our email blast. Even though customers can respond to that phone number, we don't use that as our business phone number. We have a different local phone number that we have through Dialpad. So with Dialpad, we text our customers, we call our customers, we follow up with our customers. And if Y'all know about me. Y'all know that's something we're big on is following up. So I actually have someone based internationally that does our phone support and tech support, customer support, everything. Um, so Dialpad works internationally and the fees are really low. So if y'all don't know, y'all want to be hiring. Even if you're in your beginning phase, you can't do everything yourself. Um, you want to hire help. I have a very affordable customer support team that is international. They work around the clock seven days a week to support my customers. And Dialpad works really well internationally. A lot of platforms don't always work internationally or they charge you an arm and a leg for international support. So I like Dialpad for that reason. It also has a video platform so we can do video meetings. Um, it's just a great platform. I love it. Um, so yeah. I like having Dialpad um, and we try to make it so that it's not overwhelming for our support team. We don't have our phone lines open all day, every day. We have it set up where you can call us. It'll automatically hang up on you. You'll hear like this whole welcome situation and then it will hang up and it'll tell you to email us for support because we don't do phone support um, in that way. We call you, but you can't call us because we will be bombarded all day. It would be crazy. So that's where we are with that. Um, so yeah, I love Dialpad. So look into Dialpad, guys. Number four is a lesson. Here's a lesson for y'all that changed my life. As a designer, set the bar, then surpass it. As a fashion designer, set the bar, 
then surpass it. But I'm going to switch that up and I'm going to say as a creative, set the bar, then surpass it. You need to build your own lane. You can't be something that is very easily accessible or attainable. Um, when you are, or when the brand or the business that you offer, the product you sell, the service you sell, when it's easy to get, everybody can do it, right? You open the door for a lot of competition. So when I say set the bar, then surpass it, I'm talking creatively. You got to get hyper creative. Whatever you're thinking, go for it. Go crazy with your creativity, but also make sure it is simplistic as possible for your customers. So make it easy for customers to be able to um, understand the product, but be as creative as possible so that the customer that it has been created for has no question. It's like immediate when they see it, like, oh yeah, I need that. You don't want to just create a little black dress and it's like, oh, okay. Make the black dress that goes crazy with the back out, with the with the core setting so that the person it's made for has no question. You don't want to make safe products. Don't go safe, okay? Okay, number five, another lesson. Make it easy as possible. Make it easy as possible for customers to check out, okay? Make it easy as possible. You want to make, allow customers, if you're in e-commerce, make it easy as possible for customers to check out. It should be like the least amount of clicks to get to my cart. Don't make it a situation where I got to X out of all these different pop-ups. I got to resubscribe here. Even if you're in a service-based industry, make it easy as possible for customers to pay you. Okay, make it easy. Don't put all these loops in place. Don't be the boutique that has to do DM for purchase. I got to DM you and wait for you to respond. I already found the other person because I'm seeking urgency. I'm seeking convenience. So I already found the other brand owner that allows me to purchase and I ain't got to talk to nobody. Don't make it where it's all these different barriers for pers- for someone to get the, the purchase. Make it with ease. Even if you're doing custom ordering, make your Shopify have a button where they can still check out, at least pay a deposit. You know what I'm saying? Like make it easy to retrieve the money. If not, you just holding up your business. All right. So that is a lesson I definitely learned. Number six is a resource. Now, the next two resources are books. Number six is a book called The Birth of a Brand by Brian Smith. This is the founder and CEO of Ugg Boot, y'all. He wrote a book called The Birth of a Brand, and it does not disappoint. The book is amazing. He tells you how he built Ugg from the beginning to the end. And he eventually sold Ugg for over $1 billion. Um, I'm grateful to say through my network, through someone I met through my very first business coach that helped me leave my nine to five when I was 24 years old, I was able to connect with him all through connection. So the way that I was able to meet Mr. Brian is because I used to work with a business coach. um, Yeah, when I was 24 years old, I think it was like 2015, 2014-ish. And within that program, it was a lot of like classmates that I had. And it was a private coaching program. But within that timeline, I met a lot of classmates. One of my classmates was my friend Tiffany. Um, I didn't know Tiffany at the time, but this was an amazing encounter and we just always stay connected and in touch and we've done business together multiple times she's just phenomenal um and I'm blessed because my friend Tiffany is such a God-fearing woman like when I tell y'all if y'all think I'll be praying on, on this podcast child Tiff be going in prophesying like she blows my mind I love her um and I actually just got back from Raleigh North Carolina celebrating because she's about to get married in Ghana and I'm one of her bridesmaids I'm so excited but I was looking for a new business coach so my business coach from many years ago retired she's in in a different industry now and I wanted a business coach that I literally prayed y'all I'm not gonna lie I prayed for a business coach that was a mature man that was local in California Someone I could pull up on and I could learn by watching. Someone that had built billion dollar businesses. That's what I prayed for. I ended up applying for this business coaching program. And when I had a call with them, they didn't even research my business. They didn't even look at my website. They were so unprepared. I was like, okay, God, this is a no. So Holy Spirit told me to text Tiffany. I'm like, hey, Tiff, do you know anyone that, you know, mentors in this area? They've sold billion dollar businesses. And she was like going down her list in this audio. And she was like, oh, wait, thank you, Holy Spirit. Brian, you need to talk to Brian. She emails Brian. 
Brian eventually writes back. I was praying and praying. Y'all, I had one call with this man and it changed my life. I told him about this business concept I had in a regular exposure and how I strategized to scale it to like a nine figure brand and an eight figure brand. And he was like, the stuff you're saying, I didn't think about until I had already reached eight figures in sales and almost lost everything. So the fact that you're thinking about this right now at this point, you are ahead of the game. And I literally was in tears like, oh my gosh, thank you. Um, so I'm blessed and grateful to say that I've been mentored by Mr. Brian Smith. And I'm grateful to say that he is someone I have on speed dial. I can call him and say, Mr. Brian, like this is what's happening today. And he gives me his feedback. Um, this man is a billionaire. He lives in California. He literally surfs all day, every day. Like he's living the life y'all. Um, so yeah, read his book, The Birth of a Brand, so y'all can hear how Ugg Boot was developed. And I want y'all to hear how many times he had to start over, how many times he had to rely on his network. This is not an independent thinking game. This is truly something that will require for you to rely on your network. So read that book. Number seven is Rich Dad, Poor Dad, another book. This book changed my life about wealth. Um, if y'all read my book, then y'all know that baby, we got, we had a down bad moment. Um, and we were able to make over a quarter million within 90 days to recover from that season. But yeah, that's cool. You can make a quarter million, but do you know how to retain it? Do you know how to develop assets? Do you know how to vertically integrate a company? Sometimes we just want to have these creative brands. Ooh, I want to be a fashion designer. Are you making money? Are you vertically integrating your brand where eventually you have ownership in your factory? Are you vertically integrating your brand where you own the building that your business is housed in? That, those are the goals that I have. Um, because this is how the rich stay rich. They don't pay taxes. Okay. Um, but we ain't even going to get into that. I don't want the IRS to listen to this podcast and shut me down. Okay. So <laughs> I operate 100% percent legally but I don't think we understand sometimes that there are so many opportunities for us to build wealth within our businesses so for example uh rich dad uh poor dad Robert really teaches you y'all rich people find amazing talent they seek amazing talent wealthy people invest in stocks they invest in trust they invest in whole life insurance when I read this book and then I started doing my research man I started really truly researching okay this is a trust this is what I need to do as far as my ownership of my business being in a trust I only own five percent personally of the business then I'm the guarantor of the trust then I have beneficiaries and then I have a business trust and a personal trust so I'm putting all these loopholes in place then I can well 100 donate um the uh revenue that's made it within the uh, business that is owned by the trust i can donate that like i had to really break it down but we ain't even gonna get into that right now but y'all read the book if you want to really learn how to get money and retain money read the book this book is what made me start taking trading and stock classes where i'm now trading this book changed my life so read that book number eight this is a lesson proper mentorship will make or break your brand Proper mentorship will make or break your brand. So y'all, when I first developed a regular exposure 18 years ago, it was birthed because I was a student within the NAACP Youth Entrepreneurship Program. Like that program changed my life. And I had a teacher named Miss Lisa. I talk about her in my book um, and a regular love story. So shameless plug, get my book. It's pretty life changing. It's pretty amazing. Um, but Miss Lisa was someone that volunteered her time and she really, 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 really guided us as children through the world of entrepreneurship. And it blew my mind. Um, that mentorship changed my life. I eventually had another business coach 10 years later. That mentorship changed my life. I have definitely had a lot of discernment when it comes to who I seek as mentors and always praying over who God provides to be a mentor. I told you guys, Mr. Brian Smith, that was something all through referral, right? But there are so many mentors out here. Um, and don't, y'all, don't be going trying to reach out to all my mentors if you ain't ready, okay? <laughs> but nonetheless, um, I have seen a lot of people that advertise that they're mentors and it might be something where they're just selling 
you know, something real quick and easy. So just be mindful of who you're seeking mentorship from. Be mindful of the reviews. Be mindful of if, if they're qualified to be a teacher. Um, and we all can learn something from someone, but being a teacher is a huge responsibility. And the Bible even says that, like, being a teacher is a huge responsibility. Don't be someone that just blabs on and on. Like, it's biblical. So just give a, give a little discernment to to the process um, when seeking mentorship. I don't want to speak ill. I, I'm not speaking of anyone in particular because I, I couldn't tell you one. Uh, but I can just tell you over the years I have seen some some challenges in mentorship and I've heard so many stories of people that come to Fashionpreneur Academy and tell me oh I try to work with this company I try to work with that factory I try to work over here and I just didn't get the result and sometimes things just be hustles you know um and the result isn't their goal so just keep that in mind and do your research and ask questions don't be scared to ask the tough questions to the mentors let me see the results let me see who can I talk to that can tell me that you really did influence their business you changed their life um I'm 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 big on a testimonial. Any email I send out, I got testimonials. I'm like, nope. Here go to here go to testimonials to back it. Go DM them. Go ask them because <laughs> I don't want y'all thinking that this is something where you're not gonna get your result. Um, now let's get into number nine. This is a lesson and a resource in a sense, but number nine is a business plan is needed. A business plan is needed. You have to write a business plan. You guys can literally Google a business plan template. But I update my business plan every fourth quarter. I have a full b- business plan. It includes my capital requirements, my business overview, my competitors, um, my marketing overview. It includes my future plans. It includes my revenue goals, uh, my customer segmentation. Like I go in and this has come into play because I'm in a season now where we are um, we're in a place of truly being blessed and growing. Um, and I'll say that we've been connected with some amazing people in the finance world that are venture capitalists that want to invest huge figures into businesses and they want to invest in minority businesses. And these are rooms I never thought I would be in. Um, but I'm blessed to be having these conversations about financial preparation and growth for minority businesses. And the first thing they always ask is where's your business plan and your financials. So if you don't have your business plan, baby, we can't do nothing. Um, now, if you also don't have your financials, so a lot of times I talk to people like, oh, I don't, I don't have my business started yet, but I want to find some grants. Then you need a business plan. And businesses, I'm sorry, banks and corporations want to see financials. They want to see that you've invested a little something on your own before they give you something. So, you know, get started, get started, get started, get started. Now that leads me into number 10. Um, an accountant isn't optional. It is a requirement to have an accountant, y'all. Like, this is not something that you can not do. You need to keep track. You need to have your P&Ls, your balance sheets, P&Ls being profit and loss. Like, you need to keep track of all this information. And if you don't hire an accountant immediately when you launch your business, you will not have this record. And when it's time to get funding and capital, and I'm telling y'all, these venture capitalists want to invest in minority businesses, these banks... As much as the economy is tore up, they have a certain, a lot of them, I won't say a lot. Some of them have a certain amount of money they have to give to minorities and black businesses. Like they have to. So take advantage of this and be prepared because the worst thing that can happen is, all right, Chase Bank has to give away over $2 billion. They've pledged to give away $2 million or $2 billion to minority businesses and you're not even in position to get it. That's the worst. That's the worst. So get prepared. So let's get into number 11. Number 11 is a resource. We're going to get into a little bit of financials right here. Um, But a lot of people ask me, Jess, where can I find grant opportunities? Where can I find funding opportunities? There is a platform called iFundWomen. iFundWomen is an amazing platform owned and operated by women where they are literally giving out money and showing you how to raise capital if you are a women-owned brand. So check it out. If you are a fella, I know you probably obviously won't be able to benefit from our fund women, um, but there are so many other resources like Kickstarter and there's a couple other venture capitalist capitalist platforms um, and crowdfunding platforms out there. So you kind of got to do your research, but ladies, this one's for us. I fund women. Okay. Now 
I'm going to go straight into another finance one. I'm going to save the one I was about to say until we finish up with the finances. Okay, so number 12, LLCs equals loans, loans, and loans, all right? It equals money. So if you have a brand new LLC, you have a fresh LLC, you'd be surprised that there are some banks that are doing some no-doc loan opportunities, Um one of them being Navy Federal, Truist Bank, and Chase Bank was doing this last year around this time, um, but you guys can totally check it out um, and see, but they were they were giving away loans up to $250,000, no doc required. All you needed was an LLC and EIN, baby. So obviously you do have to be the guarantor. I won't say obviously, but usually you do have to be the guarantor on a lot of these loans um and business credit opportunities so make sure that your credit is in the best place it possibly could be in before going and applying to these loan opportunities there is also another loan you guys can check out cdfi that's another loan opportunity as well where you i think you can get up to a little bit over fifty thousand. um so check out that loan as well but there are some opportunities out there to get some capital to raise to start this business and before you go asking for loans, don't make up the numbers you need. Do your business plan first so you can know down to the cent how much you need. Go ahead and gauge, okay, my Shopify is going to be this amount per month with all the apps that I need to operate my company. My product development is going to cost this much. My manufacturing, you know, like whatever that looks like for you. Know what your expenses are before you ask for a loan. Now, speaking of product development, number 14 is a lesson I learned. And this is going to have some people... A little bit, I don't know, feeling away. We'll see. But number 14, full service production isn't for me. Yes, as a fashion designer that has been operating the Fashionpreneur Academy all those years, <laughs> I have to tell y'all that full service production isn't for me. So this is specific to my fashion designers. You guys know in the Fashionpreneur Academy, I tell you guys and I teach you how to do full service production or I teach you how to do it my way, the Fashionpreneur way, which is a seamless system where I work contractor by contractor. Full service production is too expensive. That, I, that's just how I feel. I don't care. Um, these agencies are, they, they, they are getting crazy. They getting up there with the hairstylist. Y'all see how the hairstylist, you got to come with your hair washed, you got to come with your hair already curled and bumped like that's where it's getting with these factories so full service manufacturing guys if you don't know are those agencies where they do everything in house for you your pattern making your sourcing your sample making your bulk production but i have a student i talked to that i'm mentoring again um i'm mentoring yeah i met, mentored her about three years ago um due to some unforeseen circumstances she wasn't able to launch her brand um, it was some things going on personally, but now she's ready to kind of get things started. So she started working with the agency and she paid $25,000 to get two dresses made. And I was like, I know you lying. And they were like basic essential dresses, beautiful dresses, but they didn't have a lot of boning, a lot of detail. Like they were things that definitely should have cost less. I was like, girl, we could have got this done for like 800 bucks and you pay 25,000. This is crazy. Um, but this is what happens when new and young designers go into these full service production agencies. They take full advantage. Like, come on now. It, it should not take a year to get your stuff developed. It should not even take, honestly, I feel more than, I feel more than three months. Y'all, when I tell y'all, I, I go from sketch to fully made sample within a matter of three weeks to a month. And I don't even get my samples in the U.S., but I go through my sample, my product development process in the U.S. And my, my system is so seamless. So another shameless plug, but I told you guys I came out of retirement recently to mentor a few people at the Fashionpreneur Academy. I also have a new course called the Fashion Biz Study Hall that I did within that month that I was out of retirement. Um, the Fashion Biz Study Hall breaks this down for you. It gives you my system. And if you do the um, upgraded option, then you'll get access to um, the factories that I actually use. So you'll be using Irregular Exposure's um, entire team to produce. Um, so down to my sketches. And you don't have to be a master sketcher. It does not matter. Like, I don't care if you can hold a pencil. You can still get your line produced. So yeah, full service production isn't for me. I'm not paying $50,000, $25,000 to develop three dresses like how can, what that is ridiculous it doesn't work like that that's not the real world of fashion design so these for full service agencies uh, that's just how i feel okay sorry not sorry <laughs> all right now number 15 
Don't take it personal, baby. I know I said that earlier, but I got to come back. Um, now, this time when I say it, I'm not talking about family and friends. I'm talking about the business itself as you grow it. Don't take it personal when team members don't work out. Don't take it personal when it's time to terminate and it's like, oh my God, I got to do this. Yes. Don't take it personal by becoming too cool and becoming friends with your business partners. We here to get this money. Not, not going to, not, not go get cocktails. Okay. Don't take it personal. Don't take it personal when people feel away because you're not their friend and you are their boss. Right. Don't take it personal. When you see other brands copying and duplicating your product, protect your brand at all costs. Now, I got a little secret to how I protect my brand. I really don't even want to put it on the podcast, so I'm not going to because I don't want these brands to hear it right now. But baby, I be getting these dupes and these copies taken down within seconds. All right. We don't play. They get notified immediately. Don't take it personal. When somebody leaves your brand a bad review and you worked so hard to develop this design and they don't like it. It's not for them. Get Focus on being the best version of whatever it is that you do. Focus on being the best at it. Understand also that you cannot do everything. You have to have a team. You got to have a team. You cannot do this on your own. If you think you're going to do everything in your, in your company in 2023, good luck. Everything's going to get 10% when it's 10 different things to do and you got to be all 10 people. When you could be given 100% to the one part you should be doing and outsourcing everything else. Okay, don't take it personal. All right, now, number 16 is a resource, Chase Minority Banking Mentorship. So a lot of people don't know, but Chase Bank has a free mentorship for minority business owners. So if you are currently a business owner, they offer mentorship. Now, I can't verify that they do it at every branch, but I have an amazing mentor. If you are in the Fashion Biz Study Hall, I gave you that contact. Um, So yeah. I have a connect there if you guys need it in the fashion biz study hall, though. Only people that I know that I'm working with. Sorry, not sorry. (laughs) All right, y'all. Number 17. That Now, this is for my people that are seeking funding. Letters to the underwriters do more than you think. So when you apply for a loan, you have to send in your financials. Within the Chase Minority Banking Mentorship, I was taught that to write a a letter to the underwriter, the person that's reviewing my loan, um, well, my application, write a letter and sneak it in the application process, but put your plan of action to pay this loan off, put why you need it and tell your story a little bit. So I've been doing it. And this year alone, I raised over $300,000 in loan and uh, business capital. So it works. All right, so I'll leave that there. Um, I do have this letter, again, for the people that upgraded in the Fashion Biz Study Hall. You guys got that too. All right, number 18, ad marketing and SEO is deeper than promotion. So I learned this truly. Facebook ads, Instagram and Facebook ads are pretty much the same. Um, Search engine optimization, which is SEO, is deeper than promotion. It's about solidifying that you are a true brand that is respected in this industry it is about letting people know that hey i start with the big dog so if i google fleece pants i want a regular exposure to come up i want that to be one of the google ads you gotta look as big as possible to compete with the big dogs okay so that is number 18 in a nutshell but really ad marketing guys and seo marketing it's worth it it is so worth it, um, not just because of the customers I get, but the ones that I attract that share that content. So people that um, are wondering, are ads worth it? It is. SEO is also worth it. That's organic marketing. And it's worth it to try to get on the first page of Google when people Google your products. It's well, definitely worth it. Um, so that is my takeaway on that. Now, I'm going to add in a bonus real quick. Those are 18 things I learned and resources I have definitely gained as an entrepreneur for 18 years. But my bonus, if you're not willing to do this, it's, it's cliche, but if you're not willing to build this business without being paid, don't do it. If this is a side hustle for money, don't do it. This has to be a passion because there are going to be days that are down. And there are going to be days that are up. You got to ride the waves. 
you got to ride the valleys as much as you ride the mountaintops, okay? So understand that there's no way to get to the top without going through the trials. There's absolutely scientifically, supernaturally through God, through Jesus Christ that I serve, there is no way to do it without going through the challenges. So just get started and get the challenges going so you can get over them, right? That is my takeaway for that. All right, y'all, but those are my 18 resources and lessons. I hope you guys enjoyed this and it's hopefully beneficial and helpful to you. Now, within me celebrating 18 years of a regular exposure, I want to invite you to a regular exposure's birthday party. It is happening on Friday, October 27th. It is 24 hours, so it is going to start 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday, October 27th, and it will end on saturday october 28th at midnight okay 24 hours only but y'all may not know um but my og fashionpreneurs know that i have launched i used to launch these fashionpreneur bags i had these fashionpreneur bags that were within fashionpreneur academy and we used to sell out of these bags within minutes they're tote bags and backpacks. And y'all have been begging and asking all year, when you gonna bring a bag? I know you retired from Fashionpreneur Academy, but when you gonna bring a bag? So one day only, they will be back, but they will be available at irregularexposure.com. So if you want your bags, this is your only day to pre-order them. Um, so make sure you tell a friend and tell that friend to tell another friend. So make sure y'all support this. I'm also going to be giving away a bag. We're also going to have, um, a raffle that retails for a thousand dollars. So it's going to be the bag, um, giveaway. And then also a $750 irregular exposure gift card will be given away. Um, raffle entry is just 10 bucks. So we got a lot we're going to be doing. We got goodie bags mystery bags like it's it's gonna be a whole shindig so join me at the party support 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 get something get something get something and the whole site will be on sale 25 percent off so it's gonna be a grand day i'm excited and i hope this blessed y'all i hope y'all enjoy these resources and hopefully i will talk to y'all soon but thank you for listening to an entry of the fashionpreneur diaries